All right, let's unpack this. We're hearing promises about generating uh, better 3D AI models than ever before. Yeah, that's the buzz. We're looking at Tencent's big update today, Hanyuan 3D 2.5. It just dropped back in April 2025. We've got, what, a YouTube walkthrough and a news article to go on? That's right. And the headline number is pretty staggering. It jumped from 1 billion parameters up to 10 billion. Wow. The claim is, you know, ultra detailed 3D assets because of that. So if you're listening and maybe just curious about AI art, or perhaps you're actually working with 3D day to day, this could be pretty impactful. Definitely. What does this huge parameter jump really mean for you? That's what we want to figure out in this deep dive. Okay, so the improvements over the older 2.0 version, what are they? Well, the sources point first to geometric resolution. That's gone up. How much? From 512 up to 1024. Okay, and practically speaking, that means? It means you're getting uh, significantly smoother surfaces on the models. Edges look sharper, more defined. Right. The sources said something like a tenfold increase in effective detail. That sounds dramatic. It really does. And it's not just the geometry, the shape itself. They've also apparently improved the PBR texture fidelity. Physically based rendering. Yeah. So more realistic materials. Exactly. How light interacts with the surfaces. Plus, they've added an experimental normal map generator. Kind of adds surface bumps and details without extra polygons. Okay. Quality sounds like a big step up. But what about speed? That's often the uh, the bottleneck with 3D stuff. Yeah, they've tackled that too. Generation speed is uh, reportedly much faster. We're talking models in maybe 8 to 20 seconds. 8 to 20 seconds. Which is roughly a 25% drop in latency, you know, waiting time compared to the last one. Okay, wow. But the basic function is still the same, right? You type in text, like pixel style dog with brown eyes or you give it an image. Correct. Text pumps or 2D images. Now with image to 3D using just one image, well, it works. <laughs> but the detail, especially on parts the AI hasn't seen, like the back of something from a front photo can be kind of limited. So the sources recommend using multiple images, like front side back views. Absolutely. That's where they say you get much, much better results, like actually getting a backpack onto a character model properly, you know. Makes sense. They also mentioned generating separate parts, though that sounds a bit fiddly. Needs external tools like Photoshop, then Blender to stitch them together. Right. And animation. There was something about rigging. Yeah, automatic rigging is possible, but you need to start with a T-pose image. And you can also retexture existing models using a text prompt or another image as reference. Sounds powerful. How do people actually get their hands on it, though? Right now, it's on their website. You get, I think, 20 free generations to test it out. But you can't, like download the model weights to run locally hmm. or use it in tools like comfy ui directly not yet publicly available no the source did mention it might happen later but interestingly someone's already testing an unofficial blender 4.3 plugin why blender oh right the mesh itself yeah the meshes can be really dense like tons of tiny triangles so this plugin helps import and maybe clean them up a bit and comfy ui that's popular for ai art workflows yeah comfy ui version 2.1 actually added specific nodes these are meant to help improve the texturing and the uv mapping when you use these hanyuan models uvs yeah that's like unwrapping the model to paint on it right essentially yes very important step okay critical point though commercial use ah yes you need a license from Tencent for commercial use. Can't just generate stuff and sell it freely. Good to know. Which brings us to the uh, the downsides. What are the current limitations? Well, the main one we touched on is that mesh density. It can be up to like 600,000 triangles. Oh, yeah. For games or real-time stuff, that's usually way too much. It needs manual cleanup, retopology. Exactly. They are apparently working on an update for that maybe by July 2025. So keep an eye out. So great for maybe quick concepts, less so for dropping straight into a game engine right now? Pretty much. Also, if your source images for image to 3D are low res, you might get texture inconsistencies. And it seems better at stylized things than, say, complex mechanical parts. Any other hurdles? Yeah, there are still significant regional restrictions. EU, UK, South Korea, apparently due to regulatory issues. Okay, so access isn't universal yet. But despite all that, the potential uses seem quite broad. Gaming, for instance. Definitely. Tencent Games apparently cut their prototyping costs by 30% using this. 30%. That's huge. Suggest it's really speeding up that early concept phase. For sure. Also, VR, metaverse applications, e-commerce for those 360 product views. Tillman animation, too. 
I saw a mention of VSET 3D integration. Right. Visa 3D, that virtual production tool, it uses the older 2.0 via Comfy UI currently, but they plan to support this new 2.5 soon, probably this June, and uh, 3D printing as well. Okay, so summing up, Hanyuan 3D 2.5, it feels like a really significant step, impressive detail, impressive speed. Yeah, for certain things, but still has those limitations, especially around the mesh complexity for professional pipelines. It really does make you think, though. I mean, look how fast this AI stuff is moving. See, it's incredibly fast. How soon? before generating detailed, genuinely usable, production-ready 3D assets is just as easy as generating 2D images getting now. That's the big question, isn't it? And when that happens, what kinds of creative doors does that open for you? And maybe what new challenges does it create along the way? Something to ponder.